Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to welcome us all to the 2019-2020 matriculation ceremony and commencement lecture of this great citadel of learning, the Federal University of Agriculture, Abel Kuta. Please note that this event will be streamed live on FUNAB Radio 89.9 FM. The commencement lecture titled, the reason for the season, hope on the horizon, will be delivered by Professor Stephen Afolami, the pioneer vice chancellor, Augustine University, Ilara Ekbe, Lagos. Ladies and gentlemen, please would all be expected to rise as soon as the abridged academic procession files in, we would all be expected to rise and remain standing until the vice chancellor and other principal officers are seated. We are delighted to have here with us. Please, we should remember that this program will be streamed live on FUNAB Radio 89.5 FM, so we can all tune in and listen. We are delighted to have here with us students representing the College of Agricultural Management and Rural Development. Kolam Rod, are you here? Are you here? Can I see you wave your hands? Thank you very much. We also have students from the College of Animal Science and Livestock Production. Do we have students here? Beautiful. Please put your hands together for yourself. We are also pleased to have with us students from the College of Biological Sciences. Thank you very much. We have students from the College of Engineering. Do we have you here? Thank you. We also have students from the College of Environmental Resources Management, COLEM. Do we have you here? Beautiful. Thank you. We have students from the College of Food Science and Human Ecology. Do we have you on ground? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please may we all rise as the academic <laughs> procession files <laughs> in. We are honored to have here for the 2019 2020 matriculation ceremony and commencement lecture of the university, the vice chancellor of this great citadel of learning, Professor uh, Kalawale Salako. Uh, we also have as our deputy vice chancellor academic, Professor uh, Bolale Akere Doluale. As if you did, yeah, the Deputy Vice one. Chancellor Development is no other than Professor Clement Adeofu. The Registrar yeah. of the Citadel of Learning is Dr. Bola Adekola. Uh, is Mr. Chukumike Ezek Piazu. And we also have as our University Librarian. Dr. Mrs. Fentola Onifade. Our commencement lecturer and the pioneer vice chancellor, Augustine University, is Professor Stephen Afolami. We recognize the presence of all our college officers here present, heads of departments. Deans of colleges, and of course, our principal officers, ah. and of the greatest oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It should be mute, not on mute. I see you don't seem to be happy to hear to be here today. And of the greatest Funabites. And of the greatest Funabites. Most of we are all gathered here today to mark this very oh, remarkable like. event your matriculation into the Federal University of Agriculture, Abel Kuta. We recognize the Dean Kofek, Professor Wasiu Afolabi. The Dean Kolanin, Professor Lusuji Chowande. 
the Dean Koleng, Professor Salami, Ismaili. This the Dean Kolem, Professor Isaac Omoni. We also recognize the presence of the Dean Kobayos, Professor Lushei Akinloye. We recognize no, the presence of the that. Dean Kofix, Professor Adio Akinwale, the Dean Copeland, Professor Uftu Atayeshe, the Dean Covet is Professor Adebayo Akinloye. You're highly recognized. We have the Dean Kolamod as Professor Emmanuel Fakoye. Fakoya. The Dean Comas is Professor Mrs. Viola Phillips, you're highly recognized. The Dean PG School is the Professor Wilfred Alekbeleye. And the Dean Student Affairs is Professor Mobolaji Omemu. We recognize the presence of all our principal officers here present and appreciate their presence in our midst. Ladies and gentlemen, may we remain standing as we take the national anthem to be followed by the FUNAB anthem. I I'm recording this. I record this. Nab and Tim. Much we may all be seated.
I would once again like to introduce and welcome very warmly the commencement lecture we are off our event today. And he is no other than the pioneer vice chancellor Augustine's University. He is in the person of Professor Stephen Afolami. Please let's put our hands again together for him. Thank you very much. May I now respectfully invite the registrar of the Citadel of Learning to please come forward to continue with the proceeding of the matriculation. The registrar, sir. May I invite the Vice Chancellor, Professor Felix Kolawole Salako, to declare this matriculation ceremony open. By the powers conferred on me by the Senate of the Federal University of Agriculture, Abe Okuta, I declare this matriculation ceremony open. May I invite the deans of the various colleges to present the matriculating students for the 1920 academic session in their respective colleges in the following order as I invite them. The dean of the College of Agricultural Management and Rural Development, Professor Fakoya. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir. Will the matriculating students of the College of Agricultural Management and Rural Development stand and remain standing? The Dean College of Animal Science and Livestock Production, Colanin, Professor Shohande. The Vice Chancellor, sir, will the matriculating students in the College of Animal Science and Livestock Production stand and remain standing? The Dean College of Biosciences, Professor Akinloe. The Vice Chancellor, sir. Will the matriculating student of College of Biosciences stand and remain standing? The Dean College of Engineering, Professor Smiler. Thank you, Alan, sir. Will the students in the College of Engineering stand and remain standing? The Dean College of Environmental Resources Management, Professor Moni. The Vice Chancellor, sir. Will the matriculated students in the College of Environmental Resources Management stand and remain standing? The Dean College of Food Science and Human Ecology, Professor Afolabi. The 
the Vice Chancellor, sir. With the matriculating students of the College of Food Science and Human Ecology stand and remain standing. The Dean College of Physical Sciences, Professor Akinwali. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir. Will the matriculation student in the College of Physical Sciences stand and remain standing? The Dean College of Plant Sciences and the Crop Production, Co-Plant, Professor Atayeche. The Vice Chancellor, sir, with the students of College of Plant Science and Crop Production stand and remain standing. The Dean College of Veterinary Medicine, Professor Akiloe. The Vice Chancellor, sir. Will the matriculating students of College of Vet Medicine stand and remain standing? Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir. I present to you the matriculated students in the Colleges of Agri and Rural Man Development, Animal Science and Livestock Production, Biosciences, Engineering, Environmental Resources Management, Food Science and Human Ecology, Physical Sciences, Plant Science and Crop Production, and Veterinary Medicine, whose names are contained in the registrar, register of students for the 2019-2020 session. and sincerely promise and declare that I will pay due respect and obedience to the Vice Chancellor and other officers of the university and that I will faithfully observe all regulations which may, from time to time, be issued by them for the good order and governance of the university, including an order that I should make restitution for damage done by students to public property I faithfully promise to refrain from any act of violence and other actions calculated to disrupt the work of the university or likely to bring the university into disrepute. In addition, I accept that should I be found wanting in character, the university 
reserves the right to withhold the award of a degree to me. So help me God. Can you bow before the Vice Chancellor in affirmation of your oath? Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, I now invite you to accept these students as bona fide students of Federal University of Agriculture, Abe Okuta. I admit you all to the Federal University of Agriculture, Abi Okuta. You can now sit down. Sit down, please. Before I go ahead with my speech, I want the registrar to draw his mask down so that the students can see who he is. Stand up. <laughs> Thanks so much. Principal officers of the university, deans of colleges, of graduate school, student affairs, directors of institutes, centers, and services, staff and other members of the university community, student union president and members of the executive, matriculating students, our commencement lecturer and guest speaker, parents, guardians, and well wishers, gentlemen of the press, ladies and gentlemen, great Funabite. Matriculating students should know that they are now great Funabites. Great Funabites. I'm deeply elated to welcome all our fresh students to one of the most beautiful campuses in South Saharan Africa. And we are not joking about that. The Federal University of Agriculture, Abe Okuta. The matriculation ceremony ought to have taken place around this time last year. However, Due to COVID-19 that ravaged the global space, culminating in the partial and total lockdown of states, the admission process was ended. I implore that we continue to ensure non-pharmaceutical precautions like maintaining social distance, use of no mask, and hand sanitizers, as well as washing of hands always to prevent the transmission of the virus. The university has made provision for water and sanitizers available at every strategic location on campus for the use of staff and students. We are constrained to limit the number of attendees, students in particular, due to the pandemic and in line with the federal government's directives on hosting of events of this nature. Now, if the ceremony is being held simultaneously via Zoom for other matriculating students to participate, as only few are choosing to represent their department. In this hall, we can have about 2,000 to, to 3,000 persons comfortably. But you can see the number of people around now. As a university, we have to comply with the regulations of authorities. Matriculation ceremony is not just a ceremony. It is an oath taking exercise to affirm that you have been admitted. Anyone who does not sign the matriculation register is not a student. The eighth commencement lecture of the university is to be delivered today by Professor Steve Apolami, the immediate past vice chancellor of Augustine University, Lara Ekwe, Lagos State. You're welcome, sir. He's also a retired professor of nematology from the Department of Crop Protection, College of Plant Science and Crop Production. I'm confident 
the lecturer will do justice to the topic. And I hope the message inspires our students and also instilled in you positive attitude of, I believe I can. On our rules and regulations, you might have had the legal principle that says ignorance of the law excuses no one. This means that you shall be responsible for your actions, even when you plead ignorance. In this regard, I want to enjoin all students, fresh and returning students, to keep themselves abreast of the university rules and regulations. Copies of relevant documents can be sold from appropriate units of the university, particularly with the assistance from Student Affairs Division. Fresh students should not shy away from consulting the Student Affairs Unit, lecturers, heads of departments, or any staff they can confide in when in need of advice. It's very important that each student must understand and act positively on all academic regulations while ensuring that he or she is not involved in antisocial behaviors or criminality. Indecent public appearance is not tolerated in this university. Sanctions ranging from warning to expulsion are within our rules. Permit me to emphasize this, reco this recurring violation for parents to note. No registration of students in a session leads to withdraw from the university. For whatever reason, you ought to register in a session before you can be regarded as a student. If you do not register in any particular session, we withdraw you from the university. If you have peculiar problems, approach your heads of department and talk about them or the dean of student affairs. If you do not register at all in a session, you are no more a student. Furthermore, a student must have 70% of class attendance to qualify for examination. I wish to state clearly that though our lectures are online, we are monitoring your attendance. Please be informed that the student union exists in our university. As has been unionism with Jacoro Mansens. The student union president is here in person of Olu Yedi Abiodun Michael. I must warn that the university cannot in any way and under any circumstances tolerate any destructive action by students in the name of union. The fact that a position is not acceptable to either side of a dialogue means more dialogue is needed. More time is needed, but definitely not violence. Students must know that when the image of an institution is dented by unacceptable actions, or an institution is closed for any reason, the students are usually at the receiving end. The image of this university is your image. Your image is also our image. Please behave. Again, be assured that we shall listen and make our position clear on issues. We have been doing this, and we shall continue to do that. Our hostels cannot accommodate all our students. The pandemic has further reduced the number we can accommodate. And students will have to source accommodation from private hostels outside the campus. It is disheartening to know that all the antisocial behaviors reported to the university or seen on the internet or newspapers come from very few students living in private hostels outside the campus. It is more disheartening that majority of those reported turn out to be non-students of this university. Either those that have been withdrawn from the university or infiltrators from other institutions. The Senate of the university has carefully cut out rules for the off-campus students. Please arm yourself with this rule. You need to be conscious of where you stay outside the campus. We've had situations where police will raid some residences outside, and innocent student, students will be taken along with them. If you notice antisocial behaviors around you, move away or report to appropriate authorities. 
admission of statistics. Our statistics will show later in the presentation, our first students are among the best that are admitted in the course of the rigorous examination and true screening process. We have a total of 10,328 applicants who indicated interest in CUNAB for the 2019-2020 admission exercise, while the total number of 9,865 attended the post-GME screening exercise. Of this number, we are admitting only 4,230 applicants. In strict compliance with the university quota as approved by the National Universities Commission. In College of Agricultural Management and Rural Development, we are going to have four and four students. College of Animal Science and Livestock Production, 695. College of Biosciences, 459. College of Engineering, 248. College of Environmental Resources Management, 521. College of Food Science and Human Ecology, 455. College of Physical Science, 779. College of Plant Science and Crop Production, 613. And College of Med Veterinary Medicine, 41. Total applicants, We've given the statistics, percentage of students registered to total number admitted, 96.96%. Exemplary performance, the highest UTM score. That's how you Samuel, Uluwa, Fee, Bimiga, Mill, Mechatronics Engineering, who scored 331. Is it around? Okay, Colin, sit down. Congrats. I feel you more. I know you are called Deborah, female, mathematics, 300. Stop. Is it around? Good. I have jump score in hold. Ganyu Olamide in Oluwa, Mechatronics Engineering 289. Is it around? Father and Sweet Daniela Mavelos, Biochemistry, female, 278. The university remains committed to its vision and mission of producing graduates adequately equipped to handle contemporary challenges through cutting edge research in agriculture and science, driven by information and communication technology. We are resolute in applying our core values of academic excellence, tied with integrity, accountability, high moral standards, as well as ethical behavior and fairness in all relationship with students and staff. Our goal is to be a world-class university, building men and women who will be great achievers in their chosen fields of interest and academic pursuit. To achieve this goal, our first students must try at all times not to compromise excellence, and they must also avail themselves of the various programs, events, activities provided by the university from time to time. We are encouraged to make use of our guidance and counseling unit, as well as relate well with your departmental supervisor. Fully registered students, as well as returning students, I expected to our university identification cards, which they are to have on them at all times, especially while on campus, for proper identification and to avoid embarrassment from our security officers. The old margin that says you will be addressed the way you are dressed is still useful in this modern time, as in different dressing is a recipe for disrespect from others. Thus, in different dressing is strongly frowned out in our university. On health, we want you to seek help when in need, including getting to the clinic on time if you are sick. The university has a well funded health center on campus, manned by qualified medical officers to attend to health issues of both staff and 
and students. I want to conclude by saying that the Federal University of Agriculture at Okuta has over the years produced men and women who have distinguished themselves in various human endeavors. It's my belief and hope that as you become members of the community, you also should strive for excellence and become distinguished achievers, both at the national and international levels. The new normal of the online classes, classes will continue until the pandemic situation is brought under control. Once again, on behalf of members of the Governing Council, Senate, the University Management, and the entire FUNAP community, I welcome you all to this great citadel of learning and wish you a successful stay in the university. It shall be well. Thank you. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, as it is the tradition of Federal University of Agriculture, Abel Kuta, we want to go to the commencement lecture, which is to be delivered by Professor Stephen Olaolua Afolam. Professor Professor Afolami, can please stand up for recognition. As I just run an abridged CV of Professor Afolami, Professor Afolami was born into the highly respected family of Pa Gabriel Omotesho and Mama Juliana Afolami of blessed memory on the fifth day of January. 1951. He was lucky and privileged to start life with the Aula Wars free education program and started schooling in 1957 and proceeded to obtain the West Africa Examination Council certificate as a grade one candidate in 1968. He obtained the bachelor's degree in Greek biology from the prestigious University of Ibadan in, and also got his master's and PhD in nematology in 1987. He won the foundation Summer Research Scholarship for the training in nematological research in his um, penultimate year as an undergraduate at the International Institute of Agriculture in 1973 and was also a postgraduate Ford Foundation uh, Fellowship Fellow which he won in 1975. For his research activities, Professor Afolami pioneered the cocoa nemat nematode research in Nigeria and has trained three 
nematologist at PhD level to continue the work on tree crops in Nigeria. He has played a key role in the search for resistance to root not nematodes in various tree and arable crops with his team of postgraduate and undergraduate uh, students. As of today, he has produced and mentored nine PhD holders in this field and numerous master degree holders. Professor Folami has been at different times the president of the Nigerian Society for Plant Protection, NSPP, and was the editor-in-chief of his journal, the Nigerian Journal of Plant Protection. He is a founding member of the Nigerian Society for Nematology, one-time member of the Society of Nematologists in the USA, and the Ameri Tropical American Society of Nematologists. He is a fellow of the Nigerian Society for Plant Protection. In the university system, Professor Folami has always been highly relied upon to deliver quality service in university administration. He was head of department, dean of postgraduate school, chairman of many important university committees, and a member of the university senate. He has been the recipient of many commendations by the Senate of the Federal Investor of Agriculture, Abel Kuta, for these roles. And the most noteworthy of this being his foundational role as the pioneer chairman of the Farm Practical Year program of the university. And he was also commended for the activities for his activities as the dean of the postgraduate school. His tenure produced the postgraduate school building and the auditorium. He served from April 1, 2013 until September 30, 2020 as the pioneer vice chancellor of Augustine University, a Catholic university of the Archdiocese of Lagos in Ilaraipe on leave of absence from the Federal University of Agriculture, Abel Kuta. He was recently recognized by the University of Ibadan as one of his most worthy Alma uh, ambassador of that university and was honored as he was the ambassador during the 78th anniversary celebration of the University of Ibadan. <laughs> Professor Folami is very widely traveled, having won travel grants to conferences and research meetings and workshops at different times in two continents of the world. And he toured Americas, Europe, Africa, and all the 36 state capital in Nigeria. Professor Folami has a passion for the family as an institute, as an institution, and having been twice president of the Nigerian Association for Family Development, NAFAD, and a member of Federation of Family Academies in Africa, a platform from which he addressed World Policy Forum on the Family in 2005 in Brigham Young University in the USA. He has been happily married to Professor Caroline A. Afolami for 44 years. And they are blessed with six children, each already contributing their respective ways to the various sectors of the Nigerian economy. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, 
I want to respectfully invite Professor Afolami to deliver the commencement lecture for this matriculating year. The Vice Chancellor, Professor Salako, other principal officers of the university, deans, directors, and heads of department, other Senate members present, academic and non teaching staff of the Federal University of Agriculture, Berkuta, parents and guardians members of the print, electronic, and social media, my dear wife, who is present in this hall, the matriculating students. It is my pleasure and honor to be part of this ceremony today as the invited lecturer for commencement of the 2019-2020 session I thank the Vice Chancellor and the entire management of the university for this opportunity. There is no doubt in my mind that you have all looked forward to this day for a very long time. The number of years that the students have been waiting to see this day will depend very much on the age of the student, but regardless of your age, many things seems to have conspired in the last one year to compound the waiting time, to confuse some of you, and probably confound some others. First, it was COVID-19 global lockdown Next, it was the seemingly interminable strike of the Academic Staff Union of Universities. And most recently, but by no means comparable in terms of the time taken, the Sanu and Nasu joint strike. No matter how long it took, um, whatever was the reason for your long wait, here you are now, ready to take off on this important stage of your adult life. As the saying goes in the Nigerian language, the stamara will eventually pronounce father no matter how long it takes. Your stamara has now pronounced father. Congratulations. I have many times asked myself what life would be like for me if I were to be at the stage of life you are currently in as freshers on a university campus during these very troubled times. If it is not Boko Haram, it is Heather's farmer's clash. If it is not kidnapping, it is cultist clashes. One lockdown follows another and life drags perilously on. There are so many negative things going on that the temptation to discouragement is very high. This is further compounded by the scarcity of desirable employment opportunities after qualification, a situation that provides no motivation for working hard at obtaining a degree. That is precisely why I consider your generation very courageous. Facing head on, in spite of the prevailing unfavorable circumstances, life as it presents itself. I salute your courage and determination and I encourage you to go on with it. Please encourage yourself with a clap.
It is generally acknowledged that the tough gets going when the going gets tough. The journey to this stage in the Nigerian system has been told over and over again in different fora and from several angles. For those of you who do not have the paper, the title of this paper is The Reason for the Season, Hope on the Horizon. I was saying that the tough should get going when the going gets tough. The journey to this stage in the Nigerian system has been told over and over again in different fora and from several angles. We therefore merely acknowledge here that our journey as a nation has taken us through good and bad times. And it will seem to me as if events have currently conspired with our carelessness in the past and omissions to land us in a very rough and tough patch. All the same, life must go on. Hard times do not last forever. The storms will come and better times will come. This bad spell shall pass and your generation will survive the current hardship and live in better times. Did I hear you say amen? The challenge of university education in Nigeria today is well known. In the last 51 years, I have been privileged to experience life in the ivory tower, first as a student and later as an academic. I've also been privileged to play leadership roles at different levels of university administration in both public and private university settings. At the public level, university life has undergone many changes from being completely residential to being partly so, and in some state universities, completely non-residential until recently. Each of these settings have their effects on the students and staff. Campus life, when properly set up with all the cultural nuances that go with academics, lend a hand in shaping and forming those who pass through it. That is one of the reasons the university as an institution is called the ivory tower. As it is currently, no public university is able to provide all its students with the comfort of campus accommodation. The vice chancellor just said that. Where they provide it, overcrowded conditions rob the subscribers of the benefits expected to be derived from the facility. Overcrowding is a consequence of the pressure on universities to bend over backwards to admit as many students as the quota imposed on them by government. It is also the result of the desire, the dire need to generate internal revenue in some places. These impositions cause a dislocation in the system and prevent students from benefiting optimally from the education and training that universities are expected to offer them. Sometimes the overcrowded conditions are caused by illegal activities of students themselves who sublet already crowded space to other students that desperately need space on campus at certain parts of the semester or sometimes the entire session. I hope
approximately from 1971. My class, for instance, in 1971, was the first victim of the change in trend. The Bachelor of Science Agri Biology program I was admitted into from the preliminary study class in the Faculty of Science was overpopulated for the first year of general causes to the point that we were the first victims of the phenomenon of standing outside at the window of the classroom to receive lectures in the University of Ibado. In some of the lecture venues previously designed for fewer students, this was the case. One year later, in addition to complexities of overcrowded lecture rooms in our faculty, the phenomenon of off-campus accommodation started to occur in the university entirely. Within three years, it had become an official policy that all second-year students would not be offered accommodation on campus. Rapidly, the situation deteriorated to the point that by the 80s and 90s, only first-year and final-year students could be guaranteed accommodation under conditions hitherto alien to the university culture. The use of double-decker beds to increase the number of students in one room sometimes tripled the number for which the rooms were originally designed. Naturally, facilities gradually became so overstretched that life on campus had become slum, as opposed to the elite life of the first three decades of university education in the country. We shall not go further into details of all that led to this deterioration. The point being made is that you have predecessors who have had to face some challenges in the past, and most of them succeeded regardless. In your time, genuine efforts have been made to halt the deterioration through many interventions. In the case of FUNAB, more hostels have been built on campus and very many private initiatives have arisen around the university campus to supplement what the university has provided. The difference between then and now is that the thought of the job waiting to be taken after qualification was a spur to the struggle. That is where the courage you bring to bear on life today in our country is commendable and you must keep hope alive. I see better days ahead with improved opportunities for hardworking individuals to live a fulfilled life. That is why you must struggle to study and study hard and start off now in flying colors. I see hope, I hope you do. Delayed takeoff is another problem for freshers. A second pitfall that must be avoided as you settle down to work in the temp uh, and avoid this temptation of delaying the beginning of serious work to the second semester of your first year. This is always a regrettable, very regrettable mistake that freshers keep making year in, year out. I'm repeating it that this is always a very regrettable mistake that freshers keep making year in, year out. It is my hope and prayer that all of you listening to me today will resolve to be different in this matter. In most private universities, students see their results within three weeks uh, of the end of examination. And it is only then after their parents have had access to their portal and quarrels have arisen at home, that they sit down in the second semester to begin serious studies. Unfortunately, this phenomenon is disastrous. It can be avoided and should be avoided because the quality of your degree rests completely on the foundation of your first semester result. There is a world of difference between a 4.50 grade point average for a starter and a 
or sometimes 1.0 or even less. If someone whispers into your ears that Bill Gates is a success story, in spite of his not so impressive performance as an undergraduate, or that WizKid did not make a first class and is today famous all over the world by his Grammy Award, tell the person that for every Bill Gates, there are thousands of unfortunate failures. And for every WizKid, there are also thousands who have attempted without achieving that degree of fame or success. In any event, education is basic to understanding of the true meaning and reason for existence. There is obviously more to life than fame and wealth. The reason you are here as an undergraduate is to become educated, to understand things from the point of view of their reason for being, acquire general knowledge about life on earth and deepen your knowledge in a particular field of studies and be made ready to face the challenges of adult life philosophically and with common sense. Delayed takeoff will rob you of this philosophical approach to your education and make of you a half-baked graduate who is in no position to attract an employer and probably also in no good position to employ himself, much less create employment for others. It is in this regard that I once more stress the need for an immediate attention to your lectures and to your practical sessions, either in the science laboratory, the food technology kitchen, the tutorial rooms, or the dining room for hospitality students. The Joint Admission and Matriculation Board online platform for admission makes it possible for you students to reject the program offered you by your university of choice or accept it. Now, your presence here is an indication that you have accepted the program that you have been offered. It is not wise to spend the entire first semester or most of your years in the university in a fantasy of crossing over to another program when you should embrace what you have accepted and face up to it in a way serious enough to earn you a very good degree. If someone should derisively ask you what you then do with your good degree, with so much scarcity of desirable jobs, let such a person know that whatever is worth doing at all is worth doing excellently. There is always a reward somewhere and somehow for excellence no matter how bleak the future may currently appear to be, there is always a silver lining to every dark cloud. It is up to each one of us to discover it. I pray that in your case, you see the silver lining. There is hope in the horizon. When the vice chancellor commissioned me to prepare the commencement lecture with the freedom to choose a topic, I had a Herculean task, making a choice. By temperament, I am an optimist. And by training and guidance, I have been strengthened to think positively. By experience, these 50 years of mature adult life, I have seen the numerous benefits of the virtue of hope and the rewards of patience. Patience is an ally of the virtue of hope. By makeup and, right, and wiring, the human person cannot survive in good mental health on earth without hope. Most suicide stories begin with the loss of hope. So my mind was constantly ruminating on hope as the theme of this lecture. But how can you dare to talk about hope as a virtue to be deliberately cultivated by citizens of a nation that is so much in distress? How can you talk about hope at a time that every aspect of the average Nigerian life points in the opposite direction with so much confusion, cynicism, and negative reporting and comments in the airwaves and social media? 
are you not likely to arouse cynic reactions from your listeners and those who may read the text of your lecture later? At that point, I decided to check again the meaning of hope before dropping the title that kept coming to mind. As soon as I did, I was convinced that I was on the appropriate track. All that I needed was the fortitude to go ahead and write about hope and be courageous enough to raise some dust, hoping that by the time the dust settles, a second thought about my words will reveal some sense in them and perchance could save some will be victims of depression as a result of hopelessness. So here we are. I dare to say that there is hope in the horizon. Before defining hope, I should tell a story. As a lecturer resident in Abelkuta in the early 90s, I got invited to a series of seminars organized by the Rawa University Center, affiliated with the University of Ibadan, several evenings for a number of weeks. The timing was wrong for anyone not resident in Ibadan because 5 p.m. commencement meant 7 p.m. completion for a two-hour seminar. All the same, I put off my reticence and decided to attend the first one. I got there and found that the seminar room was filled with renowned scholars and highly respected intellectuals and society leaders like Professor J.F. Adiajai, Chief Bolaige, Professor G.O.S. Ekagwere, Justice Olaiwola Adiremi, and highly placed engineers, high court judges, and notable names in academia. I considered myself lucky to be there. The theme of the seminar series was virtues, an inquiry into moral values for our times. The lead speaker was always a professor of political science and French studies, Louis J. Munoz who was also the chaplain of the Catholic Chapel of Our Lady Seat of Wisdom of the University. It was a period of post-election violence and crisis. Each philosophical lecture was followed by a discussion on relevance and application. At the end of the entire series, what I took away was that society would change for the better only to the extent that each one of us that make it up was ready to examine himself or herself. Ask basic questions about what is right and wrong according to ethical standards and deliberately begin from that point on to pursue the good. That is, put the virtues into practice in all that he or she does. On all activities throughout the day, every day of the year, and every year of life. 38 years later, I looked back and found that those lectures and the decision to take their content seriously every day certainly made a lot of difference in my life when I listened to comments about who others think I am and who I would have been otherwise. In the same way, I am hoping that this brief interaction on this topic will make a difference in your days as an undergraduate of this great center of excellence and in your later years on this beleaguered planet. Let us therefore talk about virtues in general and hope as a particular virtue to be embraced at all times like this, at a time like this. In general, a virtue is an operative habit that is good a habit that makes both its possessor and his action good. It is also considered to be the accessory quality that enables man and woman to use his potencies, a man or a woman, to use his or her potencies or faculties correctly with ease, promptness, and pleasure. St. Thomas Aquinas refers to it as the force through which a being can follow its impetus, its impulse, with the full energy that he has. Having just scratched the surface, we should leave the experts to do the academic exercise of defining virtue further philosophically, while we speak about the generally recognized four capital virtues of prudence, justice, 
fortitude and temperance, and the theological virtue of hope in the simple terms of the layman. I started this talk by use, urging you to start your academic pursuit in FUNA promptly and diligently. I am now speaking of the virtue of fortitude. A positive and optimally beneficial response on your part to this request will require you to deploy the virtues of diligence, perseverance, and consistency, which are allied to the cardinal virtue of fortitude. The virtue that strengthens your resolve to do that which is right, regardless of what others think on the issue, or the derision of your, that you suffer as a result of your initial wholesome choice, you will have to courageously refuse to be brought down to the lower level of wrong choices. Prudence is another cardinal virtue you must cultivate. It is the mother of the four cardinal virtues, and it enables you to make the right choices. The good person is prudent. That is, he does not allow his view of reality to be blurred by the yes or no of his will, but he makes the yes or no of his will depend upon the truth of what is on ground. Prudence will guide you in your choice of friends, the companies you keep, what you choose to listen to over the radio, the time allotted to television, the websites that you visit, the distribution of your time for study, relaxation, and worship. The university as an institution offers you freedom within the limits imposed by the rules and regulations guiding your studentship. For many of you, it is the first time that you are leaving home to face the challenge of adult life. For some others, it is freedom from the strict discipline imposed by the boarding school. I hear that it is the custom among final year students of secondary schools to tear their uniform after the last senior secondary school certificate examination as their own way of symbolizing the freedom from school rules and regulations. Well, the truth about life is that nobody ever has unlimited freedom as such. We are all subject to some restrictions one way or another, the laws, of your nation, the moral code for self-discipline, employers' regulations, and the laws of nature, which we disregard at our own peril. So dear matriculants, keep in mind and react positively to the dictum of consciously making the right choices in spite of the self-discipline it entails. That way you will safeguard your future and your personality will be attractive to others and your guardian angel, who has the duty of watching over you, will have no problems because you are making an effort to be ethically sound. The virtue of justice is an important one. The citizens frequently complain about injustices in the system. There is a pervasive feeling that Nigeria is in the dire situation it is currently experiencing as a result of the gradual disappearance of strict justice. Justice is defined as the virtue that enables a system and individuals to give to each person his or her due. The citizen in justice deserves the protection and safety of life and property, and the state in return deserves the loyalty and support of our citizens in form of tax payment and obedience to the laws of the land. As students, the university owes you the responsibility of offering you appropriate training through formal lectures, seminars, cultural activities, and practical laboratory sessions. It is your duty as students to respond positively to these training sessions by your active participation to the benefit of your future life and in fairness to your sponsors and lecturers. Justice demands that we obey our superiors and respect our subordinates. The injustice of corruption in high places robs the nation of appropriate steady development and progress. It puts the younger generation in danger and deprives them of the good example they deserve. 
patriotism and love of nation has become tedious to preach as a result of the bad example of the older generations. But all the same, I urge you to decide today to make a difference. Decide on the side of fair play in your relationships with others. The, the aggregate of our individual efforts to live this virtue will contribute to improved image of our nation and create a better atmosphere of fairness and equity. The student of today is the leader of tomorrow. Let your generation begin to make the difference, even if what you see is contrary to what ought to be. You could be the lily springing up from a downhill. Theft is a major vice that is opposed to the virtue of justice because the thief deprives another of what justly belongs to the other. For that reason, internet fraud, a most rampant crime of the youth, is unjust and puts the youth who complains of the corruption of the older generations in the same class as those they condemn. We must collectively introspect and change our ways to make society safer for everybody. That is what justice demands. The lecturer prepares his lecture and delivers it well. The student attends punctually and attentively. The accountant keeps good records of income and expenditure to ensure the university does not lose revenue. And the administrator provides the required support services to ensure that the system runs efficiently. We must have the courage to be positively different, living justly. We at the top must lead by example and keep in mind that we are ultimately answerable to God for all our actions and omissions. I cannot at this point uh, go on without mentioning the virtue of temperance. The, the good person is master of his or her own self. She does not give free rein to her ambitions. I will repeat it for the man. He does not give free rein to his ambitions or his desires for pleasure at the expense of all that is good. He does not let them act without order or against nature. Temperance is the virtue of personal integrity. It has to do with moderation in all that we do, especially with regard to eating, drinking, and sexual appetite. Gluttony, drunkenness, intemperate anger, lustful are directly opposed to the virtue of temperance. A temperate person in these aspects commands respect naturally among the wise. Now, back to the virtue of hope. This virtue is one of the three theological virtues of which faith and love are the other two. For those who are Christians, St. Paul in his letter to the Romans has a description and exemplars of faith and the attributes of disinterested love which any community that wants to thrive should get familiar with. Today, however, my emphasis is on hope. Hope is defined by the Oxford Advanced Learners Dictionary as a belief that something you want will happen. Beyond that, the supernatural virtue of hope takes us beyond the earth and links us to our maker, whom we hope to see and be happy with at the end of our journey on earth. It motivates and propels our good actions and assists us to struggle with God's grace, to conquer our weaknesses and live a life consistent with the hope of a blissful eternity. I see hope in the horizon. I see it too, that our tomorrow will be better than our today as individuals and as a nation. It is in that regard that I urge you to keep hope alive, live virtuous lives, contribute to the common good of society by playing your part and lift up your beleaguered country from the death of despair it is currently facing. You and I have a role to play in this as individuals. I dare to say that you are like a ship setting sail. 
I would like to end this talk with the words of a sage that has been canonized by the Catholic Church, perhaps not word for word. He said, and I quote, my son, you are like a ship setting sail. Every mistake today that is not corrected takes you further and further from your set destination. May you find the energy to redirect the floundering ship of your life such that your later years will not be full of regrets." Unquote. End of quote. May you harness the energy and vibrance of youth to advantage by directing it right in a virtuous life instead of wasting it on regrettable vices. I wish you the very best of luck. Thank you for listening. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir. I want us to be reminded that this matriculation ceremony is actually an hybrid one. And uh, those who are outside are far more than those of us who are inside this hall. In the course of this ceremony, we have been joined across the world by 1,500 people on the YouTube and another 500 participants have joined us through the Zoom platform. And it is in the course of that that I want to invite the Vice Chancellor to please appreciate our lecturer with our tradition of hospitality in Funab. Mr. Vice Chancellor. May I humbly invite the commencement lecturer for a presentation. The Federal University of Agriculture at Bilkuta presents a word of honor to Professor Stephen Odaudua Afolami as the commencement lecturer of 2019-2020 academic session of the university. Congratulations. I'm still on behalf of the university. We present to you what you already know about all. What I already know and always appreciate. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. May I invite the Vice Chancellor to properly declare this matriculation ceremony closed. By the powers conferred on me by the Senate of the Federal University of Agriculture, Abeokuta, I declare this matriculation ceremony closed. <laughs> Thank you.
Ladies and gentlemen, may we all rise as we now take. May we all rise as we now take the FNAP anthem to be followed by the national anthem. National Anthem. Thank you very much. May we all remain standing as the procession now exits the auditorium in reverse order. The exit shall be from the right hand corner of the hall. We appreciate the Vice Chancellor, Professor Kolawale Salako, the Deputy Vice Chancellor, Academic Professor Balali Akere Doluale, the Deputy Vice Chancellor, Academic. Um, development Professor Clement Adeofu, the Registrar of this great citadel of learning, Dr. Bola Adekola. We also appreciate the Bursa, Mr. Chukurike Ezekiazu, the University Liberian, Dr. Fenitola Onifade. We appreciate all our deans here present. We recognize and appreciate very warmly our heads of departments. We recognize and appreciate very warmly the college officers here present. And of the greatest Kunobites, we appreciate your presence here with us this afternoon. We also appreciate the Students' Union for their presence here with us this morning. We say a very big thank you for sharing in our joy and participating in this very special occasion. Students will be required to remain in the hall. Their entertainment will be given to them. 
while they are being seated. The matriculating students will be required to remain in the hall. There are refreshments to be given to them while they are still seated. We appreciate all our academic staff, things and directors here present for your presence here with us this morning as we come to an end of the 2019-2020 academic section of the matriculation of this great citadel of learning, the Federal University of Agriculture, Abel Kuta. We thank you for your presence here with us this morning. We say a very big congratulations to the matriculating students here present. We recognize and also appreciate very warmly the wife of the commencement lecturer, Professor Caroline Afolami. We appreciate your presence here with us this morning. We appreciate the ceremonial committee. We appreciate all the paramilitary, the man of war, the boys brigade, and all those who have made this occasion very beautiful. We appreciate the chairman ceremonial committee and all the members of the ceremonial committee for this very beautiful occasion. We say thank you and enjoy your day. We should also remember that this event was streamed live on FUNAB FM 89.5. In the afternoon, we'll be having the second section, which is the inaugural lecture, the 62nd inaugural lecture of this great citadel of learning. We would, then, we would want to ensure that all of us are here, participate and give our full support, both on the social media and also physically. We say a very big thank you for your presence. Have a blessed day.